Well, um, thanks very much, Sir Richard. Our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, um, has changed a little bit. We were going to have um, Scott Henson, but um, unable to um, come here and sends his apology. Today we have Mr Dougal Gordon from the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries Group, Director of Livestock Systems. And his presentation today is about DPI and the big issues for New South Wales agricultural. I'll hand you over to uh, Mr Dougal Gordon. Thanks very much. So today, um, as was intimated, <clears throat> I'm going to be discussing uh, New South Wales Department of Primary Industries, its structure, uh, capability capacity. I'll also touch on the budget for the 17-18 year and what it means for the primary industry sector as well as some research and development that we're undertaking within the organisation. So firstly a little about uh, DPI. <clears throat> now of course DPI has been around for a long time. In fact DPI was uh, commenced in 1907 so it's got a significant history, it's got a great profile and brand that many people are aware of. However, not many people know, however, its structure internally, uh, and that has changed over time, of course. And so I thought I'd touch on a little about Department of Primary Industries and, and, and how it's um, essentially structured. So firstly, everyone's familiar, of course, with the agriculture component of the Department of Primary Industries. However, it's only one of six branches within it. So, of course, we've got biosecurity and food safety, fisheries, water, uh, strategy and policy, as well as performance engagement within DPI itself. So DPI is the overarching... Um, organisation. Now not many people actually know that the Department of Primary Industries is in fact the largest agricultural uh, research and development organisation and provider in Australia. So we in fact have 650 staff who work on primarily research and development. We've got a budget of 158 million. Uh, we've got a head office in Orange and uh, we've got 17 research stations across all the different agroecological areas in the state. Now the key advantages of research stations, it allows that research to be undertaken under commercial conditions but uh, without the constraints of that commercial environment. So that's a competitive advantage of, of the organisation. Now what does DPI Agriculture do? It does a number of different things. It doesn't just do policy as a lot of people suspect. And yes, we've divested out of extension services, however there's a significant amount of other things that we undertake. Now, as I mentioned, we do primarily R&D, so we do it across the full gamut of the livestock sectors and other commodities within agriculture. So cropping and, and livestock are the two key areas uh, that we undertake R&D, but we do it across uh, horticulture, uh, grains, um, soils, pastures, uh, water, and a range of other areas as well. Now, of course, we do education through the registered training organisation that is Tokal Agriculture College. And we also, within TOCAL, do training, support and licensing. Um, the Rural Assistance Authority, we do, uh, of course, provide assistance uh, in response to a range of different natural disasters, both to farmers and small businesses. And we do policy, um, as many people know. So respond to, to government policy matters as well as the, those uh, that affect industry. Now, our key... Um, KPI within the organisation is to improve the um, gross value of agricultural production by 2020 and of course R&D is a key facet that delivers against that. Now the branch that I'm uh, in charge of uh, is the livestock systems branch. Now as I mentioned before people assume that because we've divested out of extension services that we don't in fact do much uh, for the livestock sector for, for example. However, uh, my budget is a $21 million budget. I've got 135 staff, so we've still got significant capability and capacity and investment in the area. Now, one of the key uh, advantages of the uh, amalgam of things that we undertake in the livestock systems branch is the fact that we look at the whole livestock ecosystem from a research and development perspective. So soils, pastures and climate, so climate adaption, climate mitigation, but also digital agriculture. So we've got a subunit that looks at digital agriculture. We do R&D with MLA along with all the other different research and development corporations, GRDC, Horticulture Innovation Australia, Cotton Research and Development Corporation, etc, etc. So I thought I'd also touch on just briefly the 2017-18 um, budget for the New South Wales Government in relation to the primary industry sector. There's in fact about $2 billion worth of investment by taxpayers towards the primary industry sector. Uh, I thought I'd touch on a few of the key ones that are relevant today. So firstly, there is $75 million allocated towards the, the farm industry innovation fund. 
So what is that? What's the Farm Innovation Fund? It's essentially a loan facility. It enables producers or small businesses to access up to $250,000 at 2.5%, so it's quite a competitive rate for a range of different things. You can identify um, and address business risks. You can put funding towards improving permanent infrastructure. And you can also ensure the long-term productivity and sustainability. Now, there's a range of other things within it, and I could provide a heap of examples. Like, for example, you can uh, put in photo layer cells um, on your property and get it funded, and under that loan facility at 2.5%, you can put in drought infrastructure. So there's a range of different things that you can address there. There's $13 million over four years that will go towards removing stamp duty on crop and livestock insurance. $10 million will go towards the Weeds Action Program. Of course, after the, the great season last year, weeds is a, a key issue. And $6 million over four years towards the Young Farmer Business Program. Now, that uh, essentially is a joint initiative between New South Wales Farmers and DPI that uh, essentially uh, enables producers to access business ideas, tools, services, uh, relevant to their skills, business and experience, but also as it provides the opportunity to network with other producers and businesses. And for more information on any of these, please have a look at the DPI website. I thought I'd now also talk about research and development, and Richard uh, mentioned, uh, of course, um, the MLA donor company, which is a subsidiary of MLA. It enables co-investment dollars to be matched by the federal government to do research and development. One of the key initiatives under the MLA donor company that we're involved is the National Livestock Genetics Consortia. Now that's a five, million, a five year, $100 million commitment to try and uh, double the rate of genetic gain in the red meat and livestock sector, so sheep and cattle, uh, by 2022. Richard and I co-chair that particular consortia. Our contribution from a DPI perspective is five million matched by the federal government, so that gives 10 million. And it started in September last year. One particular research project that we're running under that initiative is the Retail Beef Yield Project. Now, of course, Retail Beef Yield is the key metric at a processor end and their key profit metric as well, from a, both from a productivity and a profit, profit perspective. Now, unfortunately, at the moment, um, it's, it's highly inaccurate due to a lack of carcass and phenotypic data. So this particular project will actually try and address that. Uh, incredibly important, particularly given the fact that a 1% improvement in retail beef yield will yield a $200 million benefit to the sector. So it's not just about the processing side of the industry that this is relevant. So essentially, specifically, this project will help address uh, the more accurate um, uh, retail beef yield estimated breeding values under breed plan and more broadly will enable uh, more stimulated demand for genetic improvement and fast tracking of genetic gain over time. Another initiative we've got under the MLA donor company is called the Livestock Productivity Partnership. Now, what is that? Uh, it's essentially it's a, a consortium between New South Wales DPI, uh, University of New England, and the CSIRO, along, of course, with the MLA donor company. It's a $50 million initiative. Um, critical because of any number of different reasons. Obviously, uh, productivity and, pro and profitability is essential for all producers. But when you look at some of the, uh, the key metrics associated with it, for example, a one kilo increase in, in cattle carcass weights will lead to a $100 million benefit for the sector per year. And a 1% improvement in cattle weaning rates leads to $50 million benefit for the sector. It's quite clear uh, why this is important. So we need, as a sector from a cattle industry, need to improve productivity by 2.5% per year uh, just to maintain our profitability. So we're looking at a number of different initiatives under the key R&D themes here and their room and efficiency. Uh, soils and pastures, so that's essentially feed base, and products and delivery, which includes extension and adoption, uh, to try and address that productivity and profitability. Now, of course, there's a number of different R&D projects within it, and I'll touch on some of these just now. Firstly, and Richard had a slide on this as well, so we're, of course, getting funded uh, by the MLA uh, as well, as in addition to this particular project, to do research on uh, trying to get a better and more accurate assessment of... Uh, the key carcass traits. This one in particular is on farm, so it's in real time, shoot side, and essentially enables us to measure P8 fat and muscle score um, to enable you to better understand where to put those stock. You don't have to obviously uh, send them to, 
to the processing plan and not meet those processor grids, you'll know on farm. So you'll know, so you'll have to, so you, therefore you won't have to um, pay those costs for transport, get those discounts at a processor level because you'll know that shoot side. So that's a, a key project from our perspective that will result in you having better marketing options, improved productivity and profitability over time. Another project we're looking under the Lifestyle Productivity Partnership is looking at uh, improved feed base. So essentially one of the key issues of course is not only trying to address that feed gap during the winter months when it's difficult to obviously keep those stock at a, at a condition that you want or rising plant of nutrition, but it's also trying to find uh, pastures that are able to withstand climate change. And we're seeing uh, over time, as we're well aware, of course, um, with increases in temperature, it makes it more difficult for those pastures to retain that resilience that are necessary. So we're looking, for instance, particularly in northern, northern, northern New South Wales, where this is relevant, looking at tropical legumes that will also match uh, tropical grasses to increase productivity over time. So this is, as I mentioned, will help counter climate, climate change. A particular summer legume we're looking at at the moment, uh, we've identified as Desmanthus, and we see that as having higher potential. So we're doing this work through the, the, ta um, the Tamworth Agriculture Institute, and we're hoping that uh, we'll deliver those productivity goals that we're after. Lastly, uh, there's, and you may have seen this last week, but we've launched this particular project. We're about halfway through. Uh, it's in the digital agricultural area. We're calling it the Farm Decision Technology Project. It's essentially it involves a number of different partners. It involves ourselves, Cisco, which of course is a global giant uh, in the IT area. Uh, producer Ben Watts from Molong, and it also involves um, the Innovation Central Sydney hub, which is a essentially a hub uh, of a range of different players in this digital agriculture space. Vols Cisco, Vols Data61, which is a CSIRO subsidiary, Vols New South Wales Farmers and ourselves. What is, so what is it? What is it about? It involves amalgamating an array of different sensors, uh, LoRa connectivity. So LoRaWAN is a, is a connectivity solution that uses um, low power, wide area networking to essentially enable you to um, have sensor data information and transmit that through to a central repository which in this case will be your, for instance, your homestead. And it, in conjunction with that, uses a whole range of analytics and modelling and it will all can be converted into a simple user-friendly dashboard interface to enable you to make more improved and faster decisions surrounding pasture management and livestock. So that's the, the, the key ingredient. Uh, what we're seeing at the moment, that we're, in, we're able to, through the use of this technology, um, make uh, decisions as to when you should move livestock uh, or destock, uh, for instance, when, when it's drying, uh, about one to two weeks before you can actually visually see the, the impacts of those dry conditions on pasture and, and also in body condition for livestock. Now, those two weeks can make a significant difference, particularly if you're selling those cattle to, to market. Uh, that market is obviously won't be as impacted as others once they see that impact on stock and they see that declining condition. So you're ahead of the market and so there's a significant financial benefit for, ans for instance in doing that. Plus you can keep that rising plan of nutrition. If you decide not to destock, you just want to move paddocks. And so that's the key benefits of this. Now, this is not just a technology and connectivity project. It's also about robustness and ruggedness of technology. So by trialling it on farm, we can ensure that it actually withstands the rigours of that challenging environment which we've got. So it was launched last week, you may have seen on the front page of the land, also got some copy uh, elsewhere. Uh, so it's just got some good early um, support and we think it's a really, a really good project going forward. Now this is a bit hard to read, I'm sorry, but uh, I'll try and explain this as best I can. I don't have a pointer with me, but you'll see in the top left hand corner there's a array of different sensors there. So we're, we're actually capturing weather data, we're capturing livestock weight data through walkover weighing. We also have got uh, in development a pasture app or a pasture sensor that enables, uh, to, enables you to assess biomass uh, in conjunction with soil moisture probes. That data is transmitted you know, up to 10 kilometres through the LoRaWAN connectivity through uh, into a gateway that um, Cisco have produced. At the same time, we're using drone information on biomass sensing. We're using video feeds from in situ cameras over pastures. 
and that goes into a cloud server. So it doesn't clog up your computer uh, on farm, it doesn't clog up your RAM, it goes into a cloud, then goes into a data warehouse. Uh, at that particular point, uh, there's a range of different modeling and analytics that are undertaken by a whole range of different players and different companies we're working with at the moment. And it goes up into a simple user-friendly interface uh, that you can use uh, on farm. So that's a bit of an explanation of this particular project. So you'll see more about this uh, as time goes on, but I think it's really exciting. So that's it. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Sir um, Dougal. Uh, is there a couple of people or someone that would like to ask a couple of questions? We do have the um, roving mic. Uh, these speakers have taken their um, time out to um, come here, and it's a great opportunity to ask those questions that you might lay at night thinking about. Also, um, ladies and gentlemen, there is plenty of seating out here to the um, left of me. Uh, there is seats also available upstairs and seats here at the front. So. If you are wanting to um, seat, there's plenty of seats available. So is there any questions? Well, Dougal, there doesn't seem to be a question. So um, Mr. Rob Cinnamon will just do a presentation. And um, thanks very much for your um, time out here today. Thank you. Thanks, Dougal. Again, on behalf of uh, Yugobar, we really appreciate you coming today. Uh, the simple fact that there were no questions means that you've answered everybody's questions. You hope. Well, they weren't listening. Thanks very much.